Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So in today's video, I'll be sharing with you all the books that I ended up reading in the month of August. So you can tell I'm in a bit of a different filming location. Um, I ended up moving in with my fiance this month and there's just been a lot of big life kind of changes. I said I moved in with my fiance and I started my um, like adult job post school. So I'll be kind of working two jobs technically. So I'm a research scientist at one of the local hospitals. So in addition to kind of the research hospital uh, position, they also encouraged me to go and teach. So in addition to doing like my research job, where not only am I a research scientist, but also director of orthopedic research, I also am teaching a course at my university. Um, so the way that my university works too is they don't technically have a summer graduation. So I'll graduate in December, um, but I'm like done with school. Like I'm a doctor, done everything, just need to apply for graduation. And that's basically it. So I've been very busy. And so I didn't do a lot of reading. Part of it too is I did get kind of like a stomach flu um, when I, like the weekend I was moving in and like the first week of starting school. So I just haven't been feeling very good and trying to get into a new routine. Um, so I only ended up reading one book this month. Um, so that's kind of been a little bit. I had like more goals, but I'm currently about like halfway through one, which I'll get into. Um, so yeah, so overall, I'll just talk about the one book that I read this month and the books that I plan on reading in September. So the book that the one and only book that I read this month was Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert. This is her like, I would say like older YA romance series. It follows two characters who used to be best friends, but they had a major falling out and they're in their last year uh, before um, going to university. And one of the things that they both apply for is like this survival um, program basically where if you kind of pass through this uh, program you get a really good recommendation and you can go into your um, like a recommendation for the program that you're applying for for university so they I really like this book I really love her brown sisters trilogy but this one for me just I didn't really enjoy and I think had I known it was geared towards a younger audience I don't think I would have picked it up but um, one of the issues that I did have is that they're dealing with this point in life is something that I dealt with 10 11 years ago with kind of the stress of going like the high school like worries and troubles I just had a hard time relating to as someone who is 28 so it was just like I couldn't really care for the situations that they're in and like friend dynamics and the whole thing that you get with a university or like kind of your last year before university. Um, I did really think it did a good job at explaining kind of the pressures that a lot of kids feel in order to live up to their parents expectations that they have in regards to you know whether it being you apply to be in a certain position or like a program even though you don't want to do that so I did find that it was really well done in this one but I just didn't really care for the characters I felt Bradley in particular was just kind of very boring and Celine was just very annoying and kind of snarky and arrogant for it was just I had a really hard time connecting with them I did enjoy the banter that was between these two characters. I thought that was really well done, but overall it was just a little too boring and I think something that I couldn't relate to now as someone who's in their late 20s. So just be aware of that. Like I said, I really think Talia Hibbert does a really good job at kind of writing that banter, but because this is geared towards a younger audience, I just couldn't find it really fun to kind of read. Next, let's move on to the books that I plan on reading this month, which are the same books that I have on my TBR for August. So I hope with a little bit more now that I'm kind of settled into a routine now between balancing, you know, personal life, work, um, like my hospital work, and then my teaching job. So I think like hopefully by now I'll have like a better kind of reading routine. This is one that I'm currently reading and I really am enjoying it but it's giving me a lot of anxiety. And I think part of the reason why I've been kind of holding off reading this or I don't read it, like grab for it as often is because it is very stressful and it like, I feel upset reading it. And it is The Lost Girls of Willowbrook by Ellen Marie Wiseman. This follows a, our main character named Sage 
who I want to say six or seven years ago lost her sister to um, like pneumonia or something. Her sister passed away, but she ends up finding out that um, in like the present day narration, which takes place in like the mid 70s, that her sister is actually alive and she was admitted to Willowbrook, which was a real life institution where people with any form of mental disability were sent. So when she finds out that her sister is missing, she goes to the hospital trying to figure out what happened to her sister, trying to find her because all this time she thought she was dead. Um, but they mistakenly think she is her sister and she ends up getting admitted into this mental institution where just the care of the patients was horrendous and it is very difficult like I said this is a very difficult book to read because you know the author is not sugarcoating this like she's being really honest in terms of the depiction and what this like the treatment of the people that were admitted to this hospital were going through so it is a very difficult read. Like I said, it is a very upsetting read. So I think that's why I've been kind of reading it in small doses, but I'm about halfway through. Um, but yeah, it's just giving me a lot of anxiety. I do think this is a very important read just in terms of, you know, human rights and humane treatment of patients um, to see like how even this is in the 70s and how there's a total disregard for human life and value and treatment of others. So I think this is a very important read, like I said, but it's been very, very difficult to get through. Um, but yeah, so far I'm really enjoying this one, but like I said, I have to kind of enjoy it in small dose doses. Next up, this is a short story that I think that will be pretty easy to read because like look how big the font is and the margins are quite intense. Um, but it is Morgan by Mary E. Pearson. I think I read the ebook for this a long time ago, but it basically is the origin story of the world of the Remnant Chronicles and like the Dance of Thieves duology. I was a big fan of these books when I came out and like the mid 2010s so it's interesting that this series excuse me has gotten like a big resurgence since uh book talk and all that so i do think that's very interesting but i do really enjoy how this has kind of a very pretty design and there is like um nice kind of margins as well so i think it'll be interesting to kind of read this like i said i haven't been in this world and for a very long time and i think it maybe is expanded based on the original short story that i read so It'll be a very interesting to read and a short read as well. Next up, I have this new release that is coming out, and it is the new Cormor and Strike series by Robert Galbraith or J.K. Rowling. I don't want to read the synopsis of this, especially for crime series. I don't tend to really um, read the synopsis. I kind of just dive in. So I'm very curious to see what this one has in store. And if Robin and Strike, after like, what is this, the sixth or seventh book, like don't end up coming together and this one like becoming a couple I'm gonna be very mad um but yeah this book I'm sure it's a chonker so it'll take me a while to read but usually like for these ones I fly through them pretty quickly um but that is a new release and then there is the next installment in the Thursday Murder Club series again because it's a crime series I kind of don't read the synopsis but it follows the these four individuals or friends that live in this retirement community and they kind of find ways to insert themselves into either cold cases or active um, murder investigations and I think the author does a really good job of um, integrating a lot of humor and like using like elderly stereotypes to these characters to advantage and finding how the characters can insert themselves into the investigation i really enjoy and it does have that sense of found family which i really like i believe this one comes out towards the end of the month and this one i have on hold at the library so hopefully i can get my hands on this one soon and lastly i don't know if i'm going to get to these two this month but I decided just to throw them in here. The first one is What She Found by Robert Dagoni. This is the next installment in the Tracy Crosswhite series. Again, because this is a crime series, I don't really want to know too much about this one. Um, but in particular, the story follows Tracy Crosswhite, who is a detective in homicide detective in Seattle. And the way kind of the past few books has been is Tr Tracy has transitioned from more of a like 
current murder investigation to cold cases, where now she focuses on cold case investigations. Um, so this one I think is interesting. I do find that books that, especially series that are like crime series that focus on cold cases, makes everything interesting because how evidence is kind of lost to time I plays a big part in this and I really like seeing kind of how they tackle the limitation of not at not these events transpiring like recently and kind of losing that evidence I always think is a really fun and interesting so yeah like I said I am don't know if I'll get to this one but um I'm always down for a good crime series and lastly I've been in the mood I feel like especially if I'm slumpy I find if there is like a a decent YA or kind of older YA fantasy series or fantasy novel, um, I kind of really like to gravitate towards that. So in this case, I have A Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson, and this is a standalone series or a standalone YA fantasy. So um, when I was doing my dissertation and kind of prepping, I kind of marathoned the entire Cruel Prince trilogy. So I've been kind of wanting to get like I do enjoy some of the older YA or like not like, like older end of YA fantasy and this is one that I've heard like mixed things about but a lot of people that I do follow the reviews for seem to really enjoy it and so it says all sorcerers are evil. Elizabeth has known that for as long as she has known anything. Raised as a foundling in one of Ostromir's great libraries, Elizabeth has grown up among magical grimmeries that rattle beneath iron chains capable of transforming into grotesque monsters. When an act of sabotage releases the library's most dangerous grimery, Elizabeth is accused of treason. With no one to turn to but her swore enemy, the sorcerer Nathaniel Thorne, and his mysterious servant, she finds herself entangled in a centuries-old conspiracy. Not only could the great libraries go up in flames, but the world along this one. This one seems interesting. I like how it has the kind of library aspect in here. And the fact that it's a standalone also, I kind of enjoy because there's not that much of a commitment. Um, but yeah, like I said, I've heard mixed things, but I do know some people whose reviews that I trust have enjoyed it. So um, I'm excited to see how this one goes. And I don't know, like I said, I don't know if I'll get to these two, especially because that one Cormoran Stripe book is probably a chonker. So it will probably take me a little bit. Um, but yeah, this one is definitely on my radar. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what books you plan on reading this month and books that you read in August. And let me know if you two are in a reading slump because I feel like this summer I've just been on a big reading slump and I'm hoping in the fall I'll be able to kind of you know, get back into reading again and all that stuff. Definitely now that everything's kind of settled down, especially because the summer was so crazy with all the traveling. So um, yeah, hopefully you'll get, <laughs> hopefully my next month's kind of reading uh, update will have a little bit more to talk about. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.